All right, guys, welcome. Episode six. I can't wait till I run out of fucking fingers for this one. All right, welcome back. Big steaks and protein shakes. Uh, excited to be here for episode six, man. No, this is this like flying by. Yeah, I feel like we just started. I mean, we did, but I'm like already on episode six. I know. Crazy. I know. So episode five was kind of heavy, um, but I feel like it was really good. Yeah, I like it. It was really good. We had some audio echo again, but very little. I think it wasn't too bad. I think we got that all straightened out for the most part here. All right. So, guys, this week's episode is going to be uh, a good one. We're going to talk a little NFL, a little bit of uh, college football, a little bit of college football. Something important happened. Um, we're going to have our word of the week, and then we're going to dive into some details about our word of the week and what that really means to us. Um, then we have our Q&A and our fitness tip for the week, which because we don't have a name, it's still Angel's Angles. <laughs> All right. Julian liked that. Did you see it on Instagram? <laughs> no, I'll have to check yeah. out that comment. We always post each other's stuff. He put my video and said Angel's Angles with a winky face. Love it, love it. I thought you sent me the perfect squad video for it, too. So, all right, guys. So, for NFL, a lot's happened. Well, actually, you know what? Because we have very little college to talk about. Uh, let's talk about that first. So... Big news out of Arizona State. Jaden Daniels um, committed to LSU. So the QB situation is definitely changing, obviously. Yeah. So it could be big things for Trenton. Yeah. Trenton Bourget. So uh, for those of you that don't know and haven't listened to previous episodes, uh, Angel and Trenton played together at Miranda High School. Um, and Trenton is, well, well, was currently, or was, not currently, uh, was QB2. <laughs> Now, they don't have a QB1, so I suppose he's the guy. I, I think he needs a shot. Yeah, he does. I, I like, yeah, he does. Yeah, you talk He's about somebody, hard worker exactly, and, hardest worker in the room right there. Yeah. You know, and football smart. That is, Jeez, yeah. yeah. But, so we'll see what happens out there in ASU. Of course, we're both Ducks fans, so go Ducks. But uh, always rooting for our guys. Uh, you know, I actually made a comment. Uh, there's Andy Morales, who's a reporter for, you know, Arizona High School Sports and all that. And oh, yeah. he made a comment about how ASU's coaching thing is a mess. Um, and, you know, I told him, I was like, you know, I'm a Ducks fan, but I totally, you know, every time I see Arizona State play or, you know, like Arizona play, I'm really hoping big things for Trenton and Jordan. Uh, oh, yeah. Jordan Morgan, left tackle for Arizona. Also played with Angel. We had talked about him in episode one and two, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so excited to see what happens for them this next year. Uh, all right. Big moves in the NFL. Let's start with the biggest one. Uh, newest member of the Denver Broncos is? Yeah. Russell Wilson. Holy shit. Hey, I, I mean, like, I saw a trade coming, but, like, that was wild. To the like, Broncos. The Broncos' defense is okay, so. Yeah, but offensively, I, I mean, they got that, uh, I forget his first name, but Judy kid. So, oh, yeah. I don't know. I, his first name starts with a J, too, but, um, I mean. Judge Judy. <laughs> you, got, you got Russell Wilson now in Denver, and you really have to wonder, you know. I mean, not, not going to lie, like, when he's a Seahawk, I hate him because he's a Seahawk. Uh, as a guy, he's. You know, comes across as a very stand upstanding guy, oh, yeah. a very good husband, father. But as a player, I hated him because the Seahawk. Now I can hate him a little less, I guess, because he's a Bronco. Uh, but it'll There's be no excuses. <laughs> it'll be weird seeing him in the orange and blue. Yeah. Um, but that was probably the biggest trade that happened this last week. Probably. Yeah. I mean, um, Carson Wentz to the Commanders. Commanders. Yeah. If you haven't heard, that's a new. Uh, Washington football team's name. Yep. That's the best I can come up with. You know, I don't like it, but I don't hate it. I, I think it's just weird because you're so ingrained growing up that you know all your NFL teams. Yeah. And, like, I mean, for example, when I was – I don't remember exactly what year it was, but I was a kid and the Jacksonville Jaguars became a team. There was no Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, but it sounded stupid and all that until it just wasn't. Yeah. So I think – yeah, I think it'll it'll take I mean, some we'll get used to it, but I mean, I've just heard like the Redskins for so long. Yeah, so like it's just weird. It is. It is agreed. But we'll see what Carson Wentz does over there. But now that leaves the Colts with a vacancy at QB one. 
Um, you know, there's talks of maybe Jimmy G going over from San Fran to Joining, the Colts. Uh, <laughs> no, Anderson. dude, all over the forums they're saying uh, just trade Jimmy G for DeForest Buckner. <laughs> oh, Buckner. <laughs> now I don't know if his trade value is uh, worth a uh, DeForest Buckner, but we could hope that'd be epic. No way. <laughs> I don't know who's here. <laughs> that was a honk. Um, but so that happened. Um, and then, you know, Kaepernick's still trying to get back into the, the you know, I saw that. the mix. He put his workout video out. But the crazy part is, is like, he, the workout video he put out was like, it was fucking stormy now, man. It was windy. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to see if that ball was that. Cause I mean, the guy had accurate, accurate throws when he was on the run, surprisingly. Pocket passer, not at all. No. And, and I mean, like, he, he was a good quarterback. Like, at the end of the day, he was a good quarterback. I don't think he'll play in the league again. I think the fact that he, well, without diving too much into it, I think the fact that he won't play in the league again says a lot. But yeah. he is, let's put it this way, I can think of probably four or five quarterbacks oh, that he is much, much better than and should be starting in place of them. Oh, yeah. So... At that point, it's politics, but like we've said, we don't get into politics on this show, so it is what it is. Yeah. Um, the other one that came up today, uh, Ooh, yeah. Khalil Mack to the Chargers. Bro, you're giving, you're giving Justin Herbert now a leader on defense that, and don't get me wrong, like Khalil Mack isn't what he once was, yeah, but, but the knowledge of the game, veteran status, like – knowledge of defenses, of offenses. He's seen so many different types of offenses now. That's going to be dangerous on the defensive side of them. And, yeah. I mean, with Justin Herbert on the offensive side and all the f- weapons they have, man, they're going to make they're, a run. They're, yeah, they're going to make a run soon. Yeah. So, we'll see. And then the poor Bears, I mean, who do they have left? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, it, <laughs> there's a – when Russell Wilson got traded to the Seahawks, they were talking about – the Bears should call about DJ Metcalf, because uh, I mean DJ or no <laughs> DJ. I was, like, I, was I was trying to think who's DJ Metcalf. <laughs> DK DK Metcalf. Um, fucking yeah, they, they were trying to call about DK Metcalf, and they were talking about pairing you know him and Justin Fields. So that'd be an interesting combo. Justin Fields has potential. He does. He does. He's a smaller guy, but he has a lot of potential. Oh yeah. You know. Um, so we'll see what comes out of all that. Um, the other thing that, uh, you know, just in terms of our Niners, for example, they re-signed a couple of the guys. We were talking about them bringing back Juwan Jennings. They did that. Um, Hasty, one of the running backs. I really hope we still bring back Mostert because I think that he is probably not for sure yet. Mm. I didn't see that in the, in the wire there. So we'll see. Um, I also think that, you know, it's funny. I always think about like contract restructuring and I'm like, dude, if you have a team that you know can go to the Super Bowl, right? do you, do you take a big contract? Cause you like, yeah, you earn it, you deserve it. But like, if you know you can go to the Super Bowl, do you take the big contract and fuck the team or do you take a good contract and make it so they can bring other guys back. And that way you get a Super Bowl ring. Because then after that, your contract's done. So just change your contract, put in a, put in a bonus to make it the Super Bowl. Right. So yeah. The Super Bowl, you get a bunch of money. Yeah. That's not a, I mean, and that's what Tom Brady did when his last year at the. Well, Bucks. Tom Brady would always readjust his contract. He actually would take less money so that they could keep yeah. more guys. Um, there was this thing going around uh, Instagram that said, I don't know how Tom Brady keeps winning Super Bowls. And then the next thing was Tom Brady restructuring contract. You know, for less money, wins another Super Bowl. How the fuck does he do it? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. It's just, I mean, like, unfortunately, unfortunately like, a lot of players, players in the league, especially because you go in so young, like, they see all that money, and that's the first time a lot of them have seen that amount of money for themselves. So they either are very smart with it or they are not. So, like, and if they're typically not smarter with it, they're going to be selfish with it and not want to take less money, you know what I mean? Well, you know, that's funny you say that because that plays right into our word of the week. Yep. Wealth. Wealth. 
So wealth, I'll start, ask, I'll ask you this week, what does wealth mean to you? Um, I guess that when you think of wealth, you, like the first thing that comes to your mind is like money, you know, money, money, money. But, um, like, I feel like the true meaning of wealth is just like everything that you have, whether that's like experiences, people around you. I mean, it does include money, um, like assets, um, investments, all that jazz. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm missing stuff that you can include, but like, it's not, it's not having wealth doesn't mean that you're just rich. You know what I mean? Rich and wealthy are way different. Oh yeah, absolutely. So like I would consider myself wealthy because I have a loving family. I have great friends. Um, I have no like big investments or anything really, but I'm invested in my relationships and my like drive for what I want to do with my career. So that's my wealth so far. I'm going to dig it. Yeah. I mean, you know, automatically people assume that it's just wealth is money, financial. Yeah. And, you know, while, yes, there's a standard of, you know, they say there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy um, financially. I truly believe that there is. There's also the difference of being wealthy in terms of what you have around you, who you have around you, what you invest in yourself. Um I think that's the one key that I wish I had learned sooner in life is I always thought of wealth in the financial aspect of it. And I think that if I had thought about it more as the whole broad term, yeah. you know, I think I would have changed directions sooner. Um, and really, like, one of the things that I, I highly think make a difference is when you can make a bunch of investments financially and you can do really well. You can have a shit ton of money. Doesn't mean you're going to be happy. Doesn't mean you're going to have people around you that love you, that yeah. care about you. Um, you know, it's that whole, sh who's going to be at my funeral? And who's going to want to be at my funeral? There's a difference between, I mean, there's a difference between oh, funerals yeah. where people just go because they feel like they have to go versus they want to go pay the respect. Um, and I think that investing in yourself is the first foundational brick mm. Like, that's the cornerstone that I don't think people think about that starts your path to wealth, not only, you know, just fi like financially, but wealth as a, like, as a lifestyle, you know? Like so that. it's, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's my definition of wealth. Yeah, no, I think I agree. That, I haven't really thought of it that way. Like, when you invest in yourself, that makes... That leaves room for, for so many more possibilities with like how you think about yourself, with what you can achieve, with what you could do, with how you think about things, with how you like just handle daily tasks even. Because I mean like you can, I don't know. I always relate things to the gym, so I'm just gonna do it. But um, that's what we do, man. I know. Gym <laughs> like football. I could go to the gym and just be there for like an hour and a half and maybe do like 20 minutes worth of exercising or you'd be there for a solid hour and a half and like get in like a proper amount of rest time your proper amount of um like warm-ups your proper amount of like recovery you're working and yeah i don't know i lost my train of thought with that but <laughs> well it's investing in yourself and that's where i think the thought there might have been you can pretend, you know, you yeah. can do minimal, but, you know, are you going to build the kind of lifestyle, build the kind of body you want if you're doing minimal investment in yourself? No. I swear, we're going to get him, like, a fucking, like, a, I don't know, IV with, like, energy drink in it, it or it's something. It's cold. Like, it's kind of chilly. It's not even cold. It's, it's not cold. So like, we are in Tucson, Arizona. It's 72 I'm degrees right now. booty shorts, man. And I'm like... Well, that's your fault for wearing booty I'm shorts. Like, it's, like, kind of not chilly, but, like, it's nice and cool in here. And, like, that's, like, the perfect sleeping temperature, so. <laughs> uh, for those of you guys that don't watch the YouTube version of this, and there is a YouTube version, so I highly, you know, suggest you go check it out. Uh, you get to see both of our beautiful faces. I mean, I'm a lot prettier than he is, but, you know. Um, All right. 
he's yawning all the damn time. And I don't know if you can hear that. Like, I mean, I don't think even when I when I go through and I listen to this or I edit it that I can hear his yawning all the time. <laughs> but, like, right now, he just yawned. Um, so it's hilarious because I'm like, man, I, you know, I text you right beforehand saying, I need you awake this episode, man. So I just showered. Here we go again. Yawning. I'm, I'm gonna start calling. I'm gonna start fucking doing like a count on the podcast uh, YouTube. How many yawns? You know, fucking throughout. Take a bet. It'll take me a little bit of time, but place a bet. How many yawns? <laughs> again, I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna. We're gonna say this episode is gonna have like twenty-two yawns. I'm gonna go for twenty-two. I'm at like six right now, man. Yeah. I'm just not going to yell the rest of <laughs> Anyhow. Um, fuck, man. I lost where we were at. Talking about wealth, like self. No, I know that, but I lost the thought that I was at. So, okay. If we think of it in the context of, wow, sounded really fucking boring. It sounded like I was going to give a lecture right now. Um, if you think about wealth in terms of the, just on the financial end, right? So, like, my job helps people build wealth. Right. Yep. I sell real estate. Um, one of the key aspects of financial wealth is to start young. Like, oh man. So this is a big thing. Like right now, housing market's kind of crazy, right? Prices are high. The interest rates are going up. That was number seven, I think. I'll count them on the YouTube. I'll take the time and do it. So, you know, the interest rates are going up a little bit. Um, and in terms of what I think people don't understand is that, yes, the prices for the, for the real estate market are higher than usual. But at the same time, I can definitely tell you that if it's between renting and buying, you buy right now. Like I spent so much, so much money renting when I was younger, where if I had just, I mean, look, is everybody in a position when they're, 18, 19, 20, 25 even to like buy a place? No. But if you really think about what you're doing, like where you put your money, if you save up, you know, or you get a family member to help you out for down payment, like to gift you the down payment, like you can literally rent out room. Like I rented a room. Oh, yeah. Why was I doing that? There's things that I didn't know that – if I had done it a completely different way, I could have started building my financial wealth. But you just, sometimes you don't know. Mm -hmm. And I think that now, like in, well, I mean, it'd be, in all fairness, there's not as much, there wasn't as much out there than there is now to learn about this stuff sooner. And now yeah. I think about it all the time and I'm like, you're 22. You have all this stuff in front of you. You have me being able to tell you, you have... I'm learning it, consuming it daily, daily, daily. So it's like, yeah, you know. No, I think that's, I think, like, the whole, like, social media aspect of, like, trying to, like, get rich nowadays, like, build wealth, is, it's, like, crazy. Because, like, I can go on TikTok and scroll, and or, like, even Instagram Reels or something, and it's just people explaining, like, real estate or the stock market or nfts or crypto in like a three like a 30 seconds to three minute video and they, they, they sum it up it's like click my bio to learn more or some shit and like i'm like oh wow like that's enticing because like i, I don't really know anything much about like crypto or nfts um like i know about real estate through you and like what i learned uh what else did i say um just building like investments yeah. or like stocks well, things yeah. like that and like there's people that do that stuff like for a living uh, just post about their tiktoks and like obviously like that's not like ideal for most people because they can't i mean it's ideal and like every, anybody can do it but like not everybody can do that just for a day job you know what i mean um yes and no so here's here's the reality that i think i've had and drives me nuts the fact that I have, you know, have you guys all, you know, 22, 19, 16, like, it drives me nuts because the only option that I knew of 
if I wanted to. Like, so for example, I was I was kicked out of my house, you know, right before I was like 16 and a half, went out and had to get a job, all sorts of shit, right? The only secondary way that I knew to make money at that time was either get a second job or to start a landscaping business or a dog walking business or I'll pick up your dog shit, you know, like Mm -hmm. that's the only ways I knew. So now it drives me crazy because I'm like, there are so many fucking ways to make money. And yeah, sometimes it can get overwhelming because there's so much and there's so much information out there. But like, it's hard to sit there and go, like, I, you know, I used to get told, well, you know, get a second job. Well, then, then you get taxed to death. Yeah. I mean, you still get taxed to death for being self-employed too. But, you know, if you have your own business, for example, instead of a second job, you, you know, can take advantage of tax write-offs for certain things, yeah. um, which brings your tax bill lower, you know. Um, and, I mean, realistically, it's one of those things where it's just kind of crazy about how much – there is out there now because like you said you can scroll instagram or tiktok and all of a sudden you'll see all this stuff on how to do this and like nfts are both amazing and crazy at the same time um if you want to learn anything about nfts i highly encourage you follow gary v or gary vaynerchuk uh is his whole name he is on a huge push to educate people right now and he self-admits that 99 percent of and i don't quote me on the number but 99% 99% of the, you know, NFTs that are on the market right now are going to be shit. That they're going to be worth nothing. But for the ones that actually have value behind them, um, you know, and brief, like, so if you have no idea what an NFT is, like Gary Vee's NFTs, they, they don't just sell you an image. So they sell you the image that has a smart contract behind it that with it, like, for example, some of his NFTs give you access to his... Uh, conferences or some of his you know speaking engagements or like a you know the higher price ones like a once a year you know meeting in New York with Gary Vee like so it's not just Mm -hmm. the image you know so I guess I was always wondering about that because obviously like how can there be value in these pictures you know what I mean and like I've I've literally read nothing about them because it's not it's not the picture it's the smart contract behind it Mm -hmm. which is I mean, the, a lot of things are going to go that way soon. But, you know, uh, right now there's a craze for them. But, I mean, that I is think a I know what you mean about the 99% or whatever being shit because um, I, th- I think I get what you mean about the how, like, whatever number Gary Vee said about, like, 99% of NFTs are going to be shit. Um, because, like, I saw this tutorial about how you can literally make your own NFT, like, collection and sell them but i just don't i like if i were to do that sure i could probably hire somebody to design me some images and then i could go on and sell them online somewhere um i don't know the exact process but like what would my smart contract be you know what i mean like i'd be some stupid shit well that's the thing is that with those and here's the thing i'm not going to hate on anybody for building wealth and i mean nfts especially ones that are um brand 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 new and like newly designed they're a form of digital art right so like somebody can say oh well you know why would you buy this picture online for you know ten thousand dollars well why would somebody buy a banksy painting for a million dollars two million dollars it's still art i don't i I mean i'm not an art collector nor do i want to be so i don't get it but at the same time some people will you know um but that's part of building wealth. Right now, NFTs are popular. Crypto, the whole market's down. Um, but at the same time, you know, you see the government trying to find a way to regulate crypto, which is kind of laughable because it's supposed to be a decentralized, you know, unregulated market, um, which there's plus and minuses to that. But that's uh, the, I don't know enough about that. I'm not a subject matter expert on it, so don't want to dive into that. But, I mean, crypto is another way to build wealth. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you get in at the right time with the right coins. You can also lose your ass on it. Yeah. But a lot of those are a gamble, 
right? And that's why, like, for me, for example, I have little crypto investment. I own one F- NFT, um, and, I mean, I'm good with that. It's for me to test the waters. Like, you know, mm-hmm. if I lose my ass on the crypto that I bought, I, I don't lose everything. It's not my life savings. The NFT, if it, like, right now, I think I could probably sell my NFT for – thousand dollars which Which it's a gary v book games one um but i mean if it like i could have sold it when after i first got it and it would have been worth like 260 bucks so clearly the market on it's going up yeah um but i have no interest in selling it right now because it's worth a thousand dollars what might it be in a year you know Yeah. yeah you know Um, so we'll see, but you know, crypto NFTs, um, they're good, but they're still a gamble. Mm -hmm. Um, building wealth, building wealth financially, uh, should be, yeah, my, me and my, uh, building wealth financially should be a, a strategic thing, you know? And like, that's why, for example, the, that's why for me, it's, it's, it's important that you know, people get taught now early. And I really yeah. think that, you know, school should teach more about how to build wealth. That's what I was just about to say. Like, I feel like they still aren't talking in schools about all the things you could do after school. They're never going to. Because it's the whole system to get you to work a government job, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's, it's literally a system, but they never, they never will. And, like, luckily, I mean, you are seeing, like, in high schools... Like, all the, like, here in Tucson, I don't know if it's a universal thing, but they call it JTED. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, like, JTED classes to go be, like, a dental assistant, a welder. Uh, I took one for architecture, and I still wanted to do that back in the day. So, like, there's options for that, but, like, they still have need schooling for some of those. Like, they don't talk about, like, trade jobs, which make a lot of money. They don't talk about, like... Well, yeah, they, they just don't talk about anything other than just get ready for college. Get well, that's college. because it, so high school prepares you for a for-profit system, right? Like in order to go into certain trades, you have to go to school. Yeah. Um, not all of them. Some of them you just have to do an apprenticeship and pass a certification or, you know, <clears throat> like a state test. But a lot of trade jobs you have to go to school for. Yeah. And it's a short school, not four years, you know, maybe... Some are six months, some are a year, some are two years. Mm-hmm. But, you know, same thing with college. It drives you to, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to completely hit on college. Yeah. Like, for example, when you went, your goal was to go play college football. Yeah. You I can't that, do college football without college. Yeah. I think that when you, I don't think you should just go to college to get, like, some, just to get a degree. You know what I mean? Like, it depends, though. I don't want to hate anybody, but, like, don't go and get, like, a fucking... Gra- or, no, graphic design is pretty good. But, like, uh, there's a lot of Concordia, uh, like, an art major or something. Yeah, but, I mean, think about it this way. If you're... So, if you're going just for the aspect of playing football, for example. Yeah. And you have... And, and the fair thing is, is maybe some people think they have an idea of what they wanted to do, right? Like... And then they change their mind. But even then, if you're just going to play football, like, who gives a shit? If you walk out with a fucking political science degree yeah. that you can do nothing with other than say, yeah, I have a uh, bachelor's, like, okay, cool. But the thing is, is you went and you play college football and you're done, then you have to figure out life anyways. Yeah. But, like, I mean, if you want to be a doctor, like, yeah. no, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, n- not necessarily say... You know, if you if you want to be a doctor, you should probably go to school. If you want to be a lawyer, you should probably go to school. If you want to learn how to design buildings, you should probably go to school. Because I, I don't want to be in a building that might topple over. Yeah. <laughs> but no, there's definitely like if you want to be, if your career path that you are passionate for and like want to pursue involves you going to school, then that is 100% what you should do. Obviously. Um, but, but like, like I, I just don't like how people are just going to school just to go to school. You know what I mean? That's, well, how, that's why process. college debt is so high because like they just pay for all these stupid classes 
that like you don't really need. Oh, well, especially prereq classes. Those are I took are this gen ed. stupid writing class, and I like. I, I don't even remember any of the papers I wrote except for one, because my teacher told me I did really good on it, and it was about. Uh, I don't remember any of these papers except well, for one. I know one. exactly what it was about, but I'm trying to figure out how to word it. It was about uh, equal pay in both men and women. Mm. So, like, I just, we, like, the school was very political, so, like, I wrote it, and I did really well on it, and she liked it a lot. I had to read in front of the class for some reason. It was, like, communications class, writing, I don't know. But you know what's it. funny about that is when, so I used to hate when they used to make you read in front of the class or, you know, present something in front of the class, but then I realized as I got older, that that is probably one of the most useful things that school teaches because when you're in front of actual people, if you don't have that experience and you don't have that confidence to speak in front of people, period, you struggle a lot. Like, I mean, even, you know, for example, you can do something as simple as a call center job. And that very first time that people get on the phone, they're terrified. Like, what are these people going to say? Like, half the time... Like, for example, when I worked at AFNI for a short bit, um, we did, you know, we did a technical support for, well, the first time I, it was for uh, Verizon Landline, and mm-hmm. the second time it was for Verizon Technical Support. Um, and the funny thing is, is, like, there are people that go, you know, I don't know what my first call is going to be like. They're calling you for help. Yeah. Like, what are you terrified of? They don't, they have no idea that you're, you're, this is your first phone call. You could be here for six years. They don't know that. You know, unless you say, this is my first call. Take it easy on me. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. But yeah. It, it's useful. Um, but with that being said, I mean, Jag glasses are bullshit. Um, I think that there is more useful use of time to teach. But see, then that goes back to the system that it's designed to be. <sighs> The rich, the super rich can't stay super rich if everybody's getting rich. Mm-hmm. Um, because then the money doesn't flow all up to them, you know. Um, the whole idea of trickle-down economics, like capitalism is a great thing. But trickle-down economics does not work. And it's been proven. Like, and if, if anybody out there can prove to me how it works... By all means, shoot me a message. I want to see this. I want to hear this. I want to know this. Um, it's it's just the system that we're built into, and I don't think that I don't think the system is designed to teach people how to be financially wealthy. And I think that's something you have to go and you have to find, you know. And I do love that there's more resources out there. Um, I'm one of them. So if you're curious and you want to know how to build financial wealth with real estate. Let me know. Oh, yeah. But um, I don't know. That's, I mean, that's pretty much the, the you know, you want to build financial wealth. I'll tell you this. I think that in order to build financial wealth, you have to be willing to sacrifice the all the bullshit when you're younger for all the amazing shit you want to do later. Yeah. Um, you know, if I had spent less time drinking with my buddies, uh, bullshitting with my buddies, um, wasting a lot of fucking time with them. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's memories that live there forever, and I love those memories, and I love some of the nights we had where, you know, just had really fucking fun nights. Yeah. But at the same time, I think about how many of those nights cost me how many days, months, or years of waiting to become wealthy financially. And that I'm still on that road. Yeah. You know? So that's one of those things. My biggest advice, financial wealth. Uh, don't think of it as a, I'll do it later. Like, you know, FOMO, the fear of missing out. Like, your buddies are going out to the bar again. Are you really going to miss out on anything? No. You know? But yet, when we're in our early 20s, we still fucking do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe um, taking advantage of opportunities that are presented before you. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, like, 
I haven't been like had any represented to me that it could really like affect my life thus far. But like I know one, um, I don't, I'm sure you'll remember about like the whole uh, Red Rock property yeah. that you could have bought. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, um, like if that if something like that's presented to you, like why not take it, right? Well, so those are the kind of opportunities where, you know, it's it's one of those things where if you have the opportunity to do something that can fundamentally change your financial situation in terms of your wealth building process, take it, you know, fuck the fun trips, fuck the, you know, the bullshit. Yeah. Not even just like, like those type of things, but like advice, knowledge, like if you could pick somebody's brain, like. There's this, like, German dude that comes into bashes all the time, and he's, I, like, talk to him one day, and he's just, like, so full of knowledge, and, like, I chatted with him kind of about what he used to do, he worked on, like, cars, and he's a millionaire now, but he sits in our freaking Starbucks lobby and just sits there, and I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, I just talk to him sometimes, but, like, just people like that, like, if you could just talk to people, figure out ways they did it, obviously it's not gonna work for everybody, but, like, it just gives you an idea of different things you could do, ways you should go about your life that could potentially make you successful, make you wealthy financially. Um, and obviously, like, most people that have a lot of money are pretty happy. Um, unfortunately, that's not always the case. But um, I think that when you get the two in hand, like, if you're wealthy and happy. Oh, yeah. Well, wealth, so financial wealth and lifestyle wealth. If you have those two, I think you're good. Um, I think that um, both of like what we are doing, like the whole, like if you invest in real estate, you could become wealthy that way. But how you talked about investing in yourself, like that's, when you invest in yourself, that can, that means like taking care of your body, taking care of your mind, like you build like, I mean, health is wealth, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a, there's a fucking true statement there. Yeah. So take care of your body I mean you'll live a lot longer and yeah no I mean and that's you know that's one of the, the things that I think people I mean financial wealth is amazing yeah you know like I said I want fucking money that's my goal um but you know that's very like narrow minded if I think about the fact of why I want that it's because I want I should say not why I want it, but the how I want to be happy and have it. Mm -hmm. And when I say, you know, like you can be beyond rich and, you know, you can do a lot of amazing things and travel and see the world. Like, but if you're not in good health, if you're not in good mental health, if you're not taking care of yourself, are you enjoying it? In no way. Maybe maybe halfway yeah. but not fully you know and that's that's a big path of where you know lifestyle wealth comes in because taking care of your body like so going back to like the whole 75 heart thing right like i had heard about it heard about it heard about it saw a bunch of people po posting about it and i was like i can i can fucking do this like it's gonna be hard but i can do it yeah and i wanted something to like kickstart like because, you know, going to the gym for seven years and then, of course, we had the quarantine and all that where the gym shut down. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where, like, I needed a, like, reset on everything that I did. So, of course, enter 75 hard. You go in and you're like, ah, 75 days of this, this, that. Um, I can fucking do this. And by day 15, you're like, I'm going to die. Like, it's going to happen. But it started... Like, even if, you know, we had this discussion, I think episode three maybe, um, even if you never do it again, I think it's, and, and not just 75 hard, it can be any program, right? Just even going to get a trainer. Mm -hmm. Like, starting something that builds, and you don't have to be a bodybuilder, you don't have to be, you know, 7% body fat, like, but as long as you're working on your health, at least once a day. And that can be physical health, mental health. Like once a day. I do promote that people work out 
at least five, six times a week in some manner, whether it be a walk, whether my, my life fundamentally changed when I decided to start working out six days a week. And I mean, that's extreme for most people. Even if you work out three times a week, I think that's super beneficial. Yeah. No, yeah, man. Um, I think that investing in yourself is really important. Uh, I mean, it'll definitely play a role in building wealth. I like how we combine those two. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and one of the things that, like, for example, a lot of people are afraid to go out and talk to the people that might have some insight, right? Yeah. Like the German guy that comes in. Or like for me today, I had a meeting with my old team lead. So when I first got in real estate, Adam Kraft, and I have no problem promoting him or his business either. Uh, he's one of the first people that taught me that, you know, a scarcity mindset is the agents that won't share, you know, their knowledge with you. Um, and that goes way beyond real estate, right? Like oh, yeah. if there's people that you can learn from and they're afraid to share their how they do things, their process, like it's because they have a scarcity mindset that, that if they tell you how to do things, that somehow they're going to go without, you know. Um, Adam taught me, you know, that it, you don't have to be like that, that there's plenty of abundance, you know, that, that is out there that everybody can eat. Um, and even today, you know, like I've been in the business long enough now. I'm solo agent. I started out on his team. He taught me a lot of shit. And, you know, I hit him up last week and I was like, hey, man, I really want to change X, Y, Z about my business. I want to pick your brain. Can we grab lunch? It, you know, it takes, sometimes it takes being humble to admit that you're not the best version of you and you can, you can pick other people's minds to figure out how to create a better version. That is Um, so important. You're trying to build yourself. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, you know, and that's, that's going to be kind of funny because there's a question that we got, um, that kind of plays into, you know, talking to other people or their take on things. Oh, yeah. Um, but with that being said, I guess to wrap up, you know, wealth, at your age, at this point in your life, what do you feel, what do you feel to achieve lifestyle wealth and financial wealth are the key like key things for you now and not down the road, but what do you think like at your age right now with your experience, what do you think are the key things that can affect going forward? Um, I think like I said earlier is investing in your relationships. Like, and that doesn't mean like keeping your shitty friends around. Like you have to have, you have to be around people that put you up, um, build you up, help you out that love and care about you you know what I mean I mean the same goes for your family Mm -hmm. Um, like even if they're blood like if they're shitty to you that you don't really need them to help build wealth or anything like that so like really investing in your relationships like um, if you have a terrible relationship with like your mom or your dad like you don't necessarily need to talk to them every day and I mean like they're still your parents you get to love them all that stuff um so it's okay to still have them in your life, but you don't need to invest in that relationship more than you're investing in yourself. That's um, very true. I think that'll help with, like, lifestyle wealth. Because, I mean, like, having fun is important. Like, but I don't, I mean, I definitely think now that it's definitely not more important than, like, your life later. Because, I mean, there's so much life to live, and you can you still have fun when you're 40, 50. You know what I mean? And Yeah. I think that's the thing is that especially when you're, when you're your age, like you think that like even 35, like I remember I used to think when I was 20, 21, 22, like 35 is older. And now I'm like, fuck, 35 is so young. 37 is so young. 40 so young. Like there's so much shit in front of you. So yeah, I agree. 35 is pretty old. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> um, financial well, I guess it's just because unless like, you figured a lot of shit out already. Like it's gonna be a grind to build enough financial wealth that you have like the fuck you money and are happy with where you're at financially. Like there's people that can do it. There's 16, 17 year old millionaires because they 
popped off on like crypto or you know what I mean mm-hmm. like th- th- those cases but like I think when you find a passion for something that you enjoy doing that I mean if you want to work at a bike store the rest of your life and you find happiness in that then like that's your financial wealth yep. even if you're not making the most money you know what I mean like if you're happy then this is you go for very true very true. Like, I want to make a lot of money, but I think that with what I'm going to be doing, like, I'm not going to have to worry about that because I'm going to enjoy what I'm doing. And it'll just come, you know what I mean? Because I'm well, that's, you know, and, and mom says that a lot, like, you love what you're doing, right? And it'll come. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that the universe gives you what you ask for. Um... You know, some people call it God, some people call it, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it. The aliens, man. I think I agree with that, but I don't think it gives you whatever you ask for. Oh, I completely, dude, we'll have a whole episode on fucking frequencies and all sorts of shit. Like, I'll bust out some fucking crystals. No, I won't bust out crystals, but. Gosh, mom's getting the whole thing, man. (laughs) No, no, it's not even, it's not even. So, I think of it this way. There's some shit that, uh, in terms of that aspect, I think that it's really, I think people have gotten sucked into this idea of what life is. And I think there's a deeper, like, subset of what our life is supposed to be. Um, and I think that the things are a lot more connected, um, because there's too much that makes sense to me in that space that makes no sense to me and what we call everyday life and how it operates. People live in this fucking desperation. And when you really realize that the people that live in desperation are playing this role because that's what they've been taught and, like, how you make money, how you bring money into your life, like... I mean, there's a lot to that that, there, that needs to be unpacked, but trust me when I say that I think that if you put it out there and you're chasing a passion, like you said, it'll come. Yeah. But I think it'll come for various reasons, not just because you're working, you know, hi-ho, hi-ho. Um, hmm. Yeah. But okay. we'll unpack that in a different yeah. episode. That'd be fun. I think so. I think a lot about that shit, so that'd be fun. It'll be good, man. And uh, I'll even bring a couple crystals, okay? Um, no, I'm not I'm not as far as the crystals, but I, there's something to all that, man. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. So, with that being said, let me take a look at my notes here. Mm, fitness tip? All right. So, it's time for Angel's Fitness Tip. Angels and angles. we're back with Angel's Angles because he's got no other name. <laughs> Cue um, the squat video. <laughs> it's going to be kind of, I mean, it's not like I'm going to go in depth about anything really um, because, I mean, we talked about investing in yourself and your health and how that's important because health is wealth. Um, so with that being said, like taking care of your body, like I neglected stretching for so long and I'm still mad that you don't do it. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're big, you're big as hell. But I bet if I get around you, you're real. You're I'm actually. still fast. Um, I no, probably could do better. Just take advantage of stretching. Like I don't know, do yoga. Like it is so beneficial too. Especially like if you're seriously training. Like if you like walk every day, definitely stretch your legs. You need to be stretching everything. You know what I mean? Like every day. If you don't do extreme exercises all the time but like stretching like three two to three times a week is so beneficial for mobility for recovery for injury prevention um so i would definitely start implementing that into your um your routines if you haven't already so let me ask you this for somebody who's not quite uh mobile enough to do yoga where do you suggest they start um, I mean, there's so many variations because I mean, but like, what's just the very first thing? Like, if you're talking to somebody like me, uh, stretching is not my thing. Yeah. Um, where do you say like 
for upper body and lower body, what are two good stretches that you would advise? Uh, upper body is kind of hard to stretch because, I mean, like, you can stretch things, but, like, this type of thing is not really great. Like, grabbing something and holding your chest, that doesn't really help anything. Um, I'm sure, like, feels good for a second, but, like, a great lower body stretch is probably, like, honestly just sitting on the floor, like, um, what's it called? Butterfly? Butterfly. 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 It's like your feet touching flat and you push your hips down because even if your hips are so tight that your knees are instead of like this or like this, that's still a starting point and that's still something you can work on so that you can get your elbows in there, put your hands and you just stretch them more and more every time you do it so that your hips become more mobile, you'll be able to squat deeper, you'll be able to stand up faster, sit down easier, like all those things. Um, for everybody, I don't really know. like. Like, I mean, like I said, I really just started stretching, like, phase one of 75 hard. Yeah. Because I was hurting so damn bad from 75. Well, we're going to have to figure out an upper body stretch then. Um, I guess. I mean, your I back, yoga. maybe? I always do. I mean, I stretch my back a lot. Um, what about cat cow? I do a lot of cat cows. I don't know. I'm terrified of doing cat cow. Why? One wrong move, my back might be like, hey, nah, fuck you. It bad, it, it's <laughs> kind of hard to do it in the gym because you're all, they'll be looking at me. I don't care. Somebody can stare at my butt. It's okay. <laughs> um, you're welcome. <laughs> I, w- I remember I was doing cat cows one time. I don't remember who asked me what they were. So I took a video and I was like, wow, I'm not saying this to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I just sent them a like, YouTube. <laughs> Angels only fans. Um. <laughs> Uh, I should make an OnlyFans and just post like stretching videos. Uh, people can sell pictures. Not just for if people can sell pictures of their feet, you can sell pictures of or video of stretching. Did you know OnlyFans was made to like promote people, not like for what it's being used for now? Yeah, like, I, mean, I mean shit. But they don't care because they're making a lot of money on. Oh yeah, of course they don't care. They, as soon as they threaten to take away all the stuff that they do post on there now, uh, everybody was like, "Okay, peace," and they're like, "Wait, we changed our mind." <laughs> Um, back to foot videos and other stuff. Um, <laughs> but, all right. Uh, well, thank you for this week's Angels Angles. I was going to stand up and give you some Angels Angles, but <laughs> I forgot I had little shorts on. Yeah, so. you do. You know, we're going to find it. We're going to get a squat video of the, you and those shorts. They're like literally like his butt cheeks here. And you got to watch the video for this one. His shorts go to like here. Nah, dude. Oh, yeah. They like if he bends over far right. enough. You're you're getting you're getting They're some cheeks. Shorts. They're, They're pretty cool. Them. I want some, but I think I I terrify some people. Um. All right. Q and A. So, let's start out with this question from Chris. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for the question. Uh, first question is, who are the three people who have been most influential to you? And go. To me. Yeah. Uh, you. Uh, Kevin Corner. Uh, my all-time favorite coach. He's an amazing man, amazing mentor. Um, three people that have been most influential to me. Yeah, I don't know. I have like a lot of people, like Noah's dad, Dave, um, uh, mom. Probably mom. She influences me a lot. Yeah. I don't know if like, obviously like she's influential, but she drives me a lot, which is like. Part of our next question that I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, but, you, but you answer first. Uh, three most influential people. So, man, this is a tough one for me. I know. I was thinking about that right now. I was like, I don't know. Three most influential people for me. Um, I definitely have to say number one would be your mom. Like, and all, and, and you know, like, somebody's going to say, oh, he's trying to score points. Um, she changed a lot about my world, like, and my views on things. I used to be a lot more closed-minded about certain things, and she definitely changed that. She opened my eyes to a lot more. Um, she made me more of a dad than I already was, and, like, that's a gift that, like, changed my world completely. Um, after that would probably be, uh, 
Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know. I mean, and I wish I could just say it's people that I met, but like Gary, Gary V. Like I listened to his shit consistently for like three years. Um, and that literally changed the trajectory of my life. Like knowledge of marketing with, you know, giving a fuck, like, blew my mind and, like, it changed things for me fundamentally. Um, and third one? There was an old man that was uh, dying, and he was, like, a friend of, like, it's a friend of a friend situation, and, you know, he came in to, like, help move some stuff out. And he, I mean, he was still alive, but he was dying. Like, he had, like, days left. Yeah. And he just wanted somebody to talk to. And I sat with him for, like, a good, like, two hours. And I don't even remember his name. But he just told me a lot of shit. You know, 50-50 rule. He gave me the 50-50 yeah. rule. And we'll dive into that in another episode. But, um, and just not... You know, not to waste his life, you know. When was this? How old were you? I was 19 at the time. Wow. Yeah. It really, really shifted things for me when I talked to him. I wish I remember his name. That's interesting. Yeah. That's what I mean, just listening, talking to people. It's yeah. Crazy. Which is funny, because, like, even at 19, I don't know why, but, like, normally I wouldn't give somebody, like, that time of day at 19. Yeah. You know, because I was very, uh, I was very arrogant back then. And something just called me to sit down and talk with him, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah. What's the next question? Um, my, I got, they basically asked the same question, so I'm just going to kind of work it together. My buddies, Zach and Ishi, Ishmael, they kind of asked, what made you want to work out or what inspired you to start weightlifting? I guess, like, it was kind of introduced to me when I went into high school. It was, like, a mandatory thing that we had to do to play football. <laughs> um, I had to take a full class, but then I just fell in love with it. And so it just it helps a lot with my mental health. So that's just what I do. That's what inspires me to keep weightlifting and the way I want to and why I started. Nice. See, for me, it was very similar. So football player, um, you know, I loved lifting back in high school. But after high school, I, you know, well, I mean, I became homeless and all that shit, so obviously you're not going to have a gym membership when you're homeless. Yeah. Um, well, I can't say that. Some people might. But I got away from it for a long time, and then seven years ago, I got told by my daughter, that was two at the time, that I was squishy, your sister. Love her to death, but... Um, She's never going to live this one down. No. I, I, I see it as a... I had realized at that moment, because, you know, a two-year-old's going to tell the absolute fucking truth. Oh, yeah. Like, so I realized at that moment how out of shape I had let myself go. And, you know, there's that part of, like, being a man where you're like, how the fuck does my wife still think I'm hot? Jesus Christ, what did I do to myself? Um, you know, because when I met mom, I had just come back from the Army, and, like, I was in great shape, and, like... Oh, yeah. It, you know, and, I mean, Army is way different than lifting, um, but yeah, being told I was squishy and like really looking at myself after that and being like, Whoa, who the fuck is this guy? Um, so yeah. Yeah. But Definitely. Yeah. I mean, this is not blaming mom, but mom is the most amazing cook. Yes. So it's easy to overeat all of her food because yes. she just makes the best damn food in the world. That's where self-discipline comes in. Yeah. And we had none. We had none. <laughs> that's why everybody, that's why we have a big family, you know, like, well, no, there's, there's, none of us are fat. there's worse. There's a lot worse. I mean, we're all healthy, um, you know, but mom's cooking is, uh, if you've ever had my wife's cooking, it's phenomenal. So um, self-discipline is a big thing if you don't want to, you know, uh, get out of control. Um, yeah. But, yeah. All right, next question came from Naomi. I used to work with her at the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, any suggested protein shakes recommended for a clear liquid diet? This was a tough question. Liquid diet. Um, I think the only one that I've actually ever heard of 
is from Isopure. It's a brand. I think they're creatine. That's why I've seen it. Um, I know they make a protein that goes along with the clear liquid diet. And I think that there's this brand. It's called My Protein, I believe, where you can, like, customize your own protein powder and all that stuff that um, I, bet, I bet they could probably... Figure have out some something. options for that. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I think it's called My Protein USA or something like that. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. It's quite expensive, but uh, let's see here. The next and one. then Larry, 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 quite contrary. I worked with him at the hospital. Larry's a badass dude. Uh, we always had each other's back, so I, I love that he gave us a question. His question, and I'm going to shoot this one to you, okay. is. What is the bre- best? What is the best? The, the what best. is the yeah? What's the best pre workout? What is the best pre workout and why? And what ingredients make it the best? So that was a tough one because I mean, there's thousands of pre workouts, yeah. and some of it is preference. I think the entire, like, there's not one best pre workout. Um, Lately, I've been really staying off of pre-workout. Not like staying off, but like drinking it a lot less. And like, I find that like in the mornings when I'm like not super tired, but I'm like pretty much asleep still and still really early and I'm like going to the gym, I'll eat like a banana and like a cup of coffee. And that is enough pre-workout for me. But I'll also, in, I'll take my electrolytes, like my magnesium and my potassium, like potassium in the banana. I'll take some salt for some sodium. It's good to get those electrolytes in before the gym. Um, and like that kind of, that's pretty much what you're looking for in a pre-workout. Let me see. I wrote some things down. Um, because you can make your own pre-workouts. Like if you just buy the ingredients, it's really easy. My roommate, Cody used to do that. Um, tastes like butt, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just like all unflavored powders that are not unflavored, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, so you would definitely be looking for L-citrulline. Caffeine, obviously, where, like, you can put how much, however much you want. That's why I typically, like, eat a banana, because it has, like, the natural energy in it. But then I'll do a cup of coffee, just that little extra, like, when I don't want to take pre-workout. Um, what else? Creatine is pretty important. It helps with body composition, and it works on your strength. It helps build strength. Um, I guess you don't really need that in a pre-workout, but I've, I've seen that in pre-workouts, which they always put less than like the di- like suggested amount you're supposed to take, like for it to be effective. But they probably calculate that you're probably taking it on the side as well, mm-hmm. like alone. Um, but I just mix them in my pre-workout. I put my pre-workout and then my two scoops of creatine, nice. which is like five grams of creatine. Um, what else? Beta alanine is important. It is. Uh, it's for muscle endurance and it reduces your fatigue while you're exercising so that comes in handy and that's why some pre-workouts are so nice so nice like some of them are like overstimulating but um yeah then like i said the electrolytes the sodium potassium magnesium very important for helping your muscles rebuild and also keep you hydrated mm-hmm. and your muscles fueled um i don't know what ingredient does the like gives you like the itchiness i th- um, think it's, it's the citrulline i think so i think it's alanine i think it's also it, it promotes blood flow um so i would imagine that's what gives you the pump and like kind of makes you itchy but my pre workout right now doesn't make itchy. me itchy my nose and my ears i get itchy maybe i'm just used to it yeah. but i'm taking what's it called what's the brand uh, muscle tech it's called muscle tech shatter elite and it's it's kind of nuts actually like it's i thought it was all right <laughs> it's, it's pretty like i mean i i haven't been taking like a lot of caffeine like i'll half scoop it but like it's got a dynamine in it which is like a caffeine supplement that's if you take it at a 100 percent something i don't remember i was reading about it it's like banned but it's at like 30% in there. So uh, it's uh, okay. I mean, it was good, but it tastes like, like, dude, it tastes like shit. Dude, pre workouts always taste terrible. And when they taste good, they don't work. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, so like, I Rice, did like, that's 
my if I have to if you want me to suggest one for you, it's called the Rise R Y S E. I love that brand of pre workout. Yeah, it gives me like tunnel vision in the gym. I don't get itchy. I have enough energy. My muscles feel great. I love that one. Yeah. What can they get that GNC? I don't think you can get it at GNC. You have to order it online. I think you have to order it online. Okay, so Larry, if all that information that's like above me, I just take what this guy suggests. I take um, Rise. Um, let's see here. I got one. What's the next one? Um, my gal pal, Caitlin, she asked, how do I go about meal prepping? Ugh, I hate meal prepping. I tried, um, I've tried it like three times and it sucks. It's, meal prepping is really easy when you find things that taste good. See, but even then, okay, so here, let's go this. So granted, all right. The process of meal prepping, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you can go over that. But part of the problem with meal prepping is, is you get bored of the fucking food. Change it up. There's so many, like, like granted, some of them cost a little more. But, like, if that's not an issue, if you go to the grocery store, you can find supplements, like supplementation items for certain things. Nine out of ten. Like, instead of sour cream, you can use, like, Greek yogurt, like, just plain Greek yogurt. For, like, if you're making, like, creamy chicken um, and you don't want to use, like, sour cream or, like, cream cheese, you mix, like, Greek yogurt with your seasonings and, it like, a little bit of water maybe and it makes it more creamy. And then you mix that with your chicken and it's, like, a creamy chicken. So then I guess I'll add to Caitlin's There's question. so many things. What? Do you – what do you advise in terms of, like – for, do you prep for the week? Do you prep for four days? Um, like, what would you suggest is the ideal? Because, like, I know that when I tried it, I'd prep for a week. And after two days, I'd be like, I don't want to eat this shit anymore. So, I think when you're meal prepping, that you just have to compare how many meals that you should make. That you're not going to be able to have time or be home for. Because when I meal prepped, I would only make two meals a day and I would eat those two meals at work and then my other three like two three or four meals that I would eat the rest of the day I would eat like right before work or I would eat um like right after work and then short like later but like only meal prep what you need because it's it's supposed to help you like it's so that you can get your calories in and like stay on track instead of because I work at a grocery store it's easy to just get food from the deli if I bring food I'm gonna eat that you know what I mean um I would make six meals at a time, so I'd meal prep every three days because I only have six Tupperwares, so that's why I did that. <laughs> so um, based on the Tupperware you said that is what you, how many days you count for. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, there's people that only meal prep once a day, like for one meal a day because they can eat breakfast at home. They go into work, then they eat their meal halfway through their shift or whatever, and then they eat a snack and then dinner because you can make food at home. Like, your, your meal preps don't have to be every single meal. Obviously, like, if you're meal prepping, you're obviously trying to eat an abundance of calories or less calories. So, like, the food you eat at home should follow along the same guidelines. But does gotcha. that make sense? We might kind of rambling. No, it makes yeah. perfect sense. I mean, that's the thing is that I think that probably fits a better system because, like I said, seven days, I just, yeah, you no. know, and then I, I think it's the idea of, I think I probably could have done, like, three or four days. But then the so idea that I was like, I still have three days after the four days. Mm-hmm. So, sauces. Sauces are huge. Because, because like, like, obviously, like, I hate chicken breast, but, like, that's, that's pretty good macros. Ground turkey is not the best, but it is super good, like, for how good the macros are on it. But, like, seasonings and sauces. If you can get, like, a zero calorie, zero sugar sauce that you love and, like, enjoy, put that shit on everything. <laughs> I, there was uh, Stubbs sugar-free barbecue sauce. Love that stuff. You know, that's what's funny is like a lot of the sugar-free stuff. It's amazing when you start looking like when we did seventy-five hard, like the very first yeah. seventy-five days. I didn't want to do any like any like bread, carbs, or any like pastas and sugars. There's so much sugar and so much shit. It's yeah. ridiculous. Um, all right, and then the last question came from your buddy Zach. What is your drive? I don't know, dude. I've been struggling with this kind of lately. 
because like people would be like, oh, my drive is my girlfriend, but like, I love my girlfriend, but I mean like, I'm trying to work on me right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I'm trying to, like my drive right now is to make sure that I'm set up for life because it's obviously like, I'm set up, I'm happy, I'm wealthy, I'm financially and um, lifestyle, like my lifestyle is where I want it to be, like everything will fall in place, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's probably it. Just making sure, like, my future self is good. Which is stupid because it shouldn't, like, look that far, but... Well, but it's it's like building... You're setting the foundation for a skyscraper, yeah. right? I think, like, I mean... And here's the thing. People always say, live in the present, live in the now. Um, but the problem is, is that if you're constantly also just thinking of the now, you're going to make a lot of great choices right now that you're going to either yeah. enjoy or you're going to love at the moment. But, you know, and I, I everybody's guilty of it, you know. Like, I mean, you make a big purchase because it was in the now. Yeah. You know, or you take a trip by uh, fucking Red Rock. You take a fucking trip to Las Vegas because it was in the now. Um, and then, you know, fucking decade or two later, you're like, why the fuck did I do that? Um, so I think it's good. You set the foundation. Oh, there we go. Another yawn. Um, you set the foundation for, so I'm going to miss my 22, but you set the foundation for the future. And I think that's a good thing. Um, but yeah. what's my drive to have the most amazing fucking life that a lot of a lot of people that I, I cared about and loved uh, didn't get to have, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to create an amazing life that, <laughs> as ridiculous as it sounds, um, when you, your brothers have kids, your sister has kids, um, or if you don't have kids, or whatever the situations may be, you know, like, I, I want to be able to, once a year, be that family that, you know, takes a trip to Disneyland or Disney World and, you know, regardless of whether you're financially set or whether you guys are struggling or whether, you know, whatever your guys' own situations may be, not for it to come out of your guys' pockets um, and to see the fucking world. My drive is to sit on various beaches and and just beautiful places and explore amazing sights that this world has to offer with your mom and you know just take pictures of things that your eyes won't believe you know and to see like it sounds stupid and corny but to see your mom in front of the most beautiful fucking waterfalls and one of the most beautiful beaches um and her to be front and center with those amazing, beautiful things in the backdrop for me. Like we went to Mona Loma Falls in Oregon for my oh, birthday. Yeah, it was beautiful to see them. But when you share a passion for wanting to see like these beautiful sights, like with somebody else, it's even cooler. Like, so that's what drives me. I, mm -hmm. I want to explore the world with, you know, mom and, you know, eventually you guys like, uh, to see a whole bunch of cool shit, do a bunch of cool shit, and have the money to do so, because that's the system we live in. But that's my drive. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Yeah. All right, man. So uh, I think that's episode six. That concludes it. I think so. I think I like that one. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, as always, where the fuck can they find you? On Insta at Angel Big Legs Desmond. There you go. I got big legs. Big legs. You know, I when I started my Instagram account, I asked a bunch of my friends. So I was like, I need a name for my lifting account. And I got like a bunch. But I, he gave me this name. I think it was Adrian Grove. Yeah. yeah. All credit to him on my Instagram name. There you go. And I make it. There you go. I think, uh, I think it was good. I think it works. Like, I think I might change it later like when i'm a certified personal trainer and i need clients i'll probably make it like my name or something i think that uniqueness draws people in true so don't uh, discount that okay angel big legs desmo you can put it on the screen i definitely will definitely will um all right so 
Uh, where can they go and see if they can get a uh, if they want to get a workout? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> if they want to get a free workout, uh, where can they? Where what can they do? Can they message you? What can they do? Oh yeah, um, you message me on Instagram. Send me a text. Uh, my phone number should be on my Instagram. Uh, I'll hook it up with the day pass, so you can check out Be Strong. That's where I'm at. Um, trying to grow the team there. It's awesome. Awesome vibes there. Yeah, I'll hook it up with some day passes. Try to get you in there. Very cool. I suggest you guys go in, talk to them, uh, hit them up for that day pass because it's a pretty cool gym. Um, I'm probably yeah. still going to get a membership there. I'm waiting. Mom's going to kill me because I don't have two gym memberships and I don't want to give up either one. Um, all right, guys. So uh, I am at Realtor520 on Instagram on everything. Um Reach out if you guys have any real estate related questions. Like I said, building financial wealth. Uh, there's a lot of pants. A lot of pants. There's a lot of paths to get there, um, but real estate is definitely a good one. And if you have any questions on how to do that, how you can start to do that, if you want to know credit tips, anything like that, I got an amazing lender, Bianca Jacobs with Geneva Financial, that can help you out with that. Um, let me know. Reach out. I'm not afraid to help anybody, and if I can help you to secure an investment or to stop wasting money on rent, i uh, be happy to do so. Um, if you want to sell your house or you're just curious to know what it's worth, let me know. Reach out. Uh, doesn't cost you a thing to find out what your house is worth in this crazy market. You might just want to think about selling, um, especially if you have kids that moved out or you want to upsize, downsize, whatever you want to do. Um, I also know a lot about 1031s if you're an investor. So... All right, guys, that's it for the episode today. Angel, you've been a wonderful co-host today. Thank you. As always. Yeah. yeah. Episode six. Episode six in the books. All right, guys, have a great fucking day, as always. <laughs>